Hello, Paul Beck with uh, here again. So I'm continuing on the um, topic of what's going to happen in the Arctic with a complete loss of sea ice. And I'm just explaining the details from a recent 2019 paper that looks at what will happen with a when in terms of the radiation balance and the warming that we can expect with a complete loss of Arctic sea ice throughout the summer months. So I'll just continue um, right where I left off before. So these graphs, just to recall that these plots are basically what happens in the models in terms of the how much sea ice is lost in a million square kilometers per uh, Kelvin per per which per Celsius equivalent because it's a change um, and what it shows is that the models are nowhere near close to what we've observed so far so we're losing about 3.3 million square kilometers when when the global average temperature rises about a degree Celsius okay so that's the fact that's the key number from those plots so but the models show you know that this number would be and 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 uh you know over here you know the temperatures the models say that we would have to get global average temperatures you know are the average is about 8.7 here of the models of global warming and this is this is absurd you know given what we what we've uh, observed i mean the number is going to be much much lower but it's it's um this is, these aren't the main results of the paper. We know, we know the models are, are way behind in predicting, you know, why is that internal climate variability? I don't think so. They're just the differences in model physics. They don't have all the physics. They don't have all the processes. You know, they, they'll add things as they, they're doing their best, the best that they can. Um, but there's, um, you know, it's important to note that the observations, the loss of sea ice is way, way faster than the models. The models will get better and catch up but we can't rely on them for policy. The observed Arctic sea ice retreat per degree of global warming is 2.1 times larger than the CMIP-5 ensemble mean result. So right here, okay? About 3.3 as opposed to, you know, 1.7 or whatever. Okay, so we cannot exclude the extreme possibility that the Arctic could become annually free during the coming decades. This extreme possibility is the focus of this study. Okay, so now look, let's look at the radiative heating, the additional heating that occurs both in the Arctic and average over the globe based on satellite observations. So we've got this, we can look at the planetary or top of atmosphere, TOA for short, albedo, during a 17 year cloud, there's, there, there's data from the series instrumentation, series records which is clouds and Earth's radiant energy system, okay? So above ice-free locations in the Arctic Ocean, you know, we can estimate the planetary albedo associated with an ice-free ocean surface in a range of latitudes, seasons, and cloud conditions. You know, and then if we estimate the future cloud conditions, we can get the solar heating that would occur with a complete disappearance of sea ice during the sunlit part of the year. Okay, so basically this approach uses spatial interpolation. Okay, so it looks at the Arctic, it looks at regions where there's, the sea ice is gone, it looks at the change in the radiation, it extrapolates that to an Arctic with completely, with zero sea ice, you know, during the sunlit portions, and it calculates, you know, it, it basically uses that technique. Um, you know, this is opposed to other techniques that, um, uh, look at changes in top of atmosphere albedo for the entire Arctic region and changes in sea ice. Okay, so if you take an average over the whole year, you know, we've gone from 100% ice, um, we've, we've gone to, we want to look at 100% ice loss in the Arctic, but observed from 79 to 2016, if you average over the whole year, the annual mean ice extent showed an 18% loss. Okay, so clouds are always the uncertainty. So we look at the 
a wide range of what the cloud could possibly do to get the numbers in each of those cases. And this is the key plot here. Um, so what we have here is the Arctic albedo. So from 79 to 2011, we went from the 52% to the 48%. So 2011 is about here. It's about, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, somewhere 48% coming across, somewhere around here. Okay, and from 2011 to 2016, we've dropped a little bit, maybe 47 and change. That's the albedo. Now, as I mentioned in, the, in a couple of videos ago, in a completely cloud-free situation, a complete loss of the um, sea ice, we'd have a 15, 14%, I said, it says 15 here. So 14 to 15% reflectivity or albedo in the whole Arctic region, so that's north of 60 degrees, if it, in the cloud-free case. Now, if it's overcast, then this curve would extrapolate down here, overcast being 95% clouds, and if the clouds are of similar um, physical properties, like it's called optical depth or op optical thickness, then we would drop down to this amount of albedo with a complete loss of ice which would be, you know, a hopeful but un very unlikely situation. What we're seeing is the cloudiness baseline estimate is, is um, in the middle here. Um, the clouds don't change that much. Okay, um, so that's the cases, and I'll talk in more detail about them. In terms of global heating, this is the net anthropogenic forcing, uh, you know, which is, two, which is um, about 1.2, 1.2, Two five or something watts per square meter average over the whole planet. This is from the greenhouse gases. This is the effect of the ice loss. Um, okay, going up to about uh, zero point two one watts per square per square meter. And then where are we going to go? Um, well, this is what we expect to happen, and that would be point seven one watts per square meter of warming compared to the 0.21 that we've already seen. If it goes cloud free, you know, which is this case, we would get 2.24 watts per square meter of warming. Huge, huge, um, huge, huge warming because the Arctic would be extremely dark, you know, all open water. And if there's no clouds, that open water is gonna absorb huge amounts of energy and we're gonna get tremendous warming. This is globally average, remember. And if it's overcast, you can extrapolate up here and you still get about, I think this is 0.37 um, watts per square meter. Okay, so that's the gist of it. Okay, um, so ice-free conditions um, for the latter cloud-free case are outside the plotted range. The albedo is 15%. The change in radiative heating is 2.24 watts per square meter. And, uh, you know, this is uh, the overcast case, and this is what we would expect. So basically, the data is showing that um, in the fall and spring, okay, so going back to the text, um, previous work found the relationship between planetary albedo and Arctic sea ice cover to be consistent with a time invariant cloud albedo field. That's the one in the middle despite substantial sea ice retreat. Another recent study found an increase in Arctic cloud fraction in the fall and spring, but no discernible change in cloud fraction or cloud optical depth associated with sea ice changes in the summertime. Okay, so that's the middle of the middle curve that we're talking about. So if we look at the uh, baseline estimate scenario in which the cloud conditions remain unchanged from the present, the complete disappearance of Arctic sea ice through the sunlit portion of the year would cause the average planetary albedo of the Arctic Ocean, poleward of 60 north, to decrease by 11.5% in absolute terms. This would add 21 watts per square meter of solar heating over the Arctic Ocean relative to the 79 baseline state. Average over the globe, this is 0.71 watts per square meter. Now, there have been previous studies estimating this number. So we got the, it's, it says Flannery. I always thought it was Flannery. I have to check that. 2011, they said, so instead of minus 0.71 watts per square meter from this study, they came up with minus 0.65. 
Another study uh, had minus 0 0.825, cow et al, 2015, and, a, and another study using series stuff to 2011 uh, got 0 0.68 watts per square meter. So these numbers are all in the ballpark of our present 0 0.71, right? So we're honing in on this number. Now, of this 0.7, of the 0.71 watts per square meter of global average heating, 0 0.21 is, has already occurred between 1979 and 2016. It's okay. About half of that was during the 2000 to 2016 series uh, record, 17 years of series data from when it was launched. And the other half was between prior to that, back to 1979. Okay, so this is another key figure. So this is the sunlit month, okay, March to September. Um, this is January, February, October, November, December. It's dark there. The absorbed solar um, average globally um, radiation in watts per square meter, zero, 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 zero. If you average these numbers with the zeros, you get 0 0.21. This is from 1979 to 2016. That's the 0.21 number I've talked about. This is the ice-free number. If you average 00, zero in the red numbers, and 00, zero, you get 0 0.71. But you know the average isn't so meaningful. It, what the, it's the absolute numbers. The first thing is just losing Arctic. You know, if the ice stayed the same in all these months and just vanished to zero in September, there would be very there wouldn't be much change here in the in the warming, because the sun angle is so low uh, in the horizon, there's, there's not a lot of, of sunlight to be absorbed. The solar zenith angle is high, and most of you know, the reflectivity is high. It's glazing incidence, even on water. Um, so what it is, you know, but the, you know, losing all the ice in September, blue ocean state, um, you know, you're going to have the ice decreasing significantly throughout these other summer months. And those are the months that make a difference. So this is iceless versus, versus uh, you know, the, the, you know, up to versus the other curve. Huge jump, even bigger jump, even bigger jump. You know, so the peak is in um, May. Okay. And then, so basically the, the loss of sea ice in these months early summer months, March, April, May, June, July, those are the key um, months, August, you know, even August. Those are the key months when we lose sea ice because the sun angle is higher and you get tremendous absorption of solar energy. Okay, so, the, so, so this, is a, this is a key figure to understand, to figure out what's going to happen when we lose Arctic sea ice. Now this 0 0.71 watt per square meter average this is the equivalent of emitting 1 trillion tons of CO2 in the atmosphere. As of 2016, we, we had an additional 2.4 trillion tons of CO2 in the atmosphere since the pre-industrial period. 1.54 trillion tons from fossil fuel combustion and land use change, 0 0.82 trillion tons. So that's less being absorbed by the land because of loss of forests and so, but we're putting in 40 billion tons or 40 gigatons of CO2 per year um, and between 2007 and 2016 on average. So if you take the 1 trillion tons, divide by 40 billion tons, that's 25 years of global CO2 emissions at the current rate. So this will greatly fire us well over the 1.5 and 2 degree targets. Now, the effect of clouds is, is key as well. So the two perhaps unrealistically extreme future Arctic cloud scenarios. At one extreme, the, Ar the ice-free Arctic Ocean, it's completely cloud-free over the ocean. The other extreme, it's completely overcast, meaning greater than 95% of the area is cloud-covered. So the, the cloud-free scenario results in 2.24 watts per square meter globally average compared to the 79 baseline state. That's three times more than the 0 0.71, the intermediate state, completely overcast or 95% clouds. The, the heating would be 0 0.37 watts per meter squared, which is about half of the 0 0.71 baseline estimate. Okay, so those are the key factors and I'll con continue into yet another video. Thanks for listening.